Dear colleagues, uh, welcome to Canberra, Australia's national capital city. My name is Tony Dawson and my task today is to talk to you about the SAC classification. It's recently been updated, so what can you expect? To start with, to get the formalities out of the way, I can happily declare that I have no conflicts of interest in any of the uh, statements that I'll make today. And if we look at what we wish to try to achieve, our learning objectives for today's webinar uh, look at describing the development of the SAC classification, uh, discussing concepts of risk management and how these might be applied to implant dentistry, and finally showing you how you can classify cases using the updated online SAC classification tool. So if we look at to start off with the uh, evolution of the SAC classification. Risk management is not something new to implant dentistry. Uh, Renoir and Rangert uh, published this uh, pivotal book in 1999, so 20-odd years ago, people were start thinking about the risks associated with implant treatments and how we might uh, avoid them or overcome them. Um, Renoir and Rangert looked at uh, a system which um, identified high uh, moderate and low risks. Uh, they gave uh, those uh, risk levels uh, colour uh, designators, much like the SAC classification does, but they didn't really codify the system all that well. Uh, they did talk about SAC um, about the same time in a textbook by uh, Saylor and Pariola uh, from um, Switzerland, looking at uh, oral surgery procedures for you know, general dentists.